Hey guys, today we have a 2025 Mazda CX-70. Now, I know you may ask, what the hell is CX-70 and why does it exist if it looks just like the CX-90? Well, there are a couple minor differences. The first is styling. The CX-70 is a little bit more edgy, has more aggressive front fascia and rear fascias. Also, there is no chrome trim. It's been replaced in favor of blacked out trim. The biggest change that you see on the inside is there's no light color interior options and no third row of seats. The dimensions are the same, so I really don't know why Mazda decided to release this model. I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard about it, I thought it will be smaller than the CX-90, but slightly bigger than the CX-60 that is offered in Europe and Asia, but that's not what we got. We'll see how this model does. It was just released a couple of months ago, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit for sale numbers. Now, you probably wonder what it's like to drive it, right? Uh, so it has a more sporty edge design. Uh, is it sporty to drive? Yes. Let me put it this way. This being a Mazda focuses on driving dynamics and we really get it. Let's pop it into sport, sport mode. The suspension definitely is stiffer compared to basically any other SUV in the segment. All your pilots, passports, Highlanders, Pathfinders, they're very softly tuned. This isn't. You can tell that Mazda actually put emphasis on driving dynamics. The steering is slow, so the front end doesn't feel very quick, but it is precise and it offers feedback, which actually surprises me in an SUV of this size. Now, the price you pay for all that great handling is right comfort, and it is stiff. It is stiff, and it's not for everyone. We're gonna talk about the target audience in a second, but I can see many people driving this thing and saying, we don't like it, it's too stiff. Me, as a car enthusiast, I love it. This is perfectly tuned suspension, and in conjunction with Mazda's kinematic posture control system, it handles like a dream, really. I'm, I'm shocked how well this handles for an SUV of this size and this weight. The cabin is very well isolated, it's quiet, but the issue I have with the suspension is those very small, sharp road imperfections like potholes or small bumps. There's a lot of vibration in the cabin when you hit one. And this reminds me of my Volvo XC60. It's the same problem. The Mazda doesn't have an adaptive suspension, doesn't have adaptive shocks, no air ride, so... I wish that was different. I wish Mazda actually consider putting an, an adaptive suspension in this thing, especially in this big SUV. I understand it would raise the price of it, but... I don't know. I, to me, just many clients who are looking for a family SUV, they already know that those vehicles are not sports cars. So, I don't know, it's 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 a tough call, right? Uh, now the car is built on a new Mazda's rear-wheel drive platform, which is great. It's very refreshing to see that a mainstream brand, although Mazda has aspirations in becoming a luxury brand, really see something like that. The best thing about this platform as well is it also has inline six engines under the hood and what we have here is the top of the line Turbo S variant with 340 horsepower. It is a mild hybrid, but it also was tuned with performance in mind. We do get fake engine noise, but it sounds it sounds really cool. Uh, the power delivery is great. It's it's smooth. Uh, you really have those riffs going all the way up, and you can tell the power is coming in a very linear fashion the engine obviously not as refined as the famous b58 that bmw offers i don't think nothing compares to that engine the transmission it's mazda's in-house design i don't know why they didn't go with something like a zf uh maybe they just wanted to have control 
literally over everything, over their software, over the hardware that the transmission has. It's it's fine. It's it's not the greatest. Uh, we downshift. Wait a good second for it. Upshift. Takes another second. I mean, it's fine. You know. Let's check out this corner. Okay. Yeah, we get. Yep, yeah, we get that programmed oversteer, f uh, I'm sorry, understeer for safety. The computer was like, okay, dude, you're going way too fast. Don't forget it's an SUV. Anyways, as of cabin, I, I just love what Mazda did it, uh, what Mazda did here. We get a controller for the infotainment system. It's, it is a touch screen uh, when you use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but for major functions, thankfully, you need to use a controller and it's much more intuitive and it's safer to use in my opinion because even the placement of the screen is if I want to touch it I really have to lean forward to to get close to it not have that problem with the controller it's intuitive kind of reminds us of you know old BMW's iDrive but I love how it works uh, the gauge cluster is also very clean and simple it is digital doesn't have much customization uh, you can change the design of your gauges if you use the adaptive cruise control or the driving assist or if you go to a different driving mode. But it has all the information that you want. I wish you could display a map on it. That's the only thing that's missing here. Besides that, it's great. The cabin is a great place to be at. It's high quality. I want to risk a statement and kind of compare it to the Lexus RX TX or Acura MDX. It's, it's really great from a mainstream brand which again aspires to be a premium brand, Mazda did a phenomenal job with this cabin. There doesn't feel cheap whatsoever. You get high quality plastics, you get nice weight. The upper part of the dashboard is made of soft touch material, so there's no squeak, everything is well put together, it's solid. I really love what they did here. Now for a car that kind of wants to be a little sporty, seats, they, they offer no support. They are comfortable, but I wish there was more bolsters because when we go around those corners I slide everywhere I have to use the dead pedal to 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 stay in place <laughs> yeah yeah they I hope they can improve seats uh, there's plenty of room in the back you have okay storage across the cabin that's another issue I have with this car you know as a family SUV all you get is those cup holders here wireless charger tray is useless because your phone slides left and right uh, the center console pretty shallow you get your sunglasses holder here door pockets there aren't that great either shackling my Volvo XC60 which isn't the king of practicality has more storage solutions and more cabin space uh, besides that in this top trim you get everything that you want from a SUV that costs around $55,000 you get great engine good transmission all-wheel drive system front your parking sensors good set of driver assistance features wide hybrid system that actually returns great fuel economy for a vehicle of this size I've been averaging about 23 miles per gallon in the city, 25 combined, 30 on highway. For a vehicle of this size is great. So if you guys have any questions about the CX-70, feel free to drop a comment. I'll obviously answer all of them. Let me know what you think about this format. I kind of starting experimenting with stuff on my channel to see what you guys want to watch best. So let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you later.